Hey guys, it's uh, Jay Anthony. Welcome back to my channel. As always, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, this is going to be a general kind of update on the channel, and then I also want to talk about watch collecting. And this is something that is really kind of been on the forefront of my mind because I, I think a watch collection is such something that evolves over time. You know, I know a lot of you guys um, that I've talked to on my channel um, kind of have like themes to your collection. Or as if you've watched my videos, you can see that my collection's kind of gone all over the place. But I think the cool thing about a watch collection is that it can kind of evolve with time and your pieces almost are kind of like hallmarks of different points in your life. Um, I know for me personally, and I know for a lot of you guys that I've talked with as well, that a lot of your watch purchases are made to celebrate key moments in your life. And that's kind of like something that we, uh, you know, is we can really celebrate a great occasion with is a fine wristwatch. You know, I know men in general typically don't wear the level of jewelry that, say, a woman would, but this is no less true for a woman as well. Um, you know, where obviously people can buy rings and bracelets and uh, necklaces, I think there's something really special about a watch that makes it uh, a perfect thing to celebrate a grand occasion in life. You know, if we get that big promotion at work or if we graduate or as just a, a celebration of something in life. Um, not to say that I, I know people have actually get their watches engraved as well, which I personally don't do. But there's just something very personal about a watch. Um, you know, it's, it says a lot about your style, your personality, um, depending on where you are in your life too. It shows, I think it speaks volumes about kind of what you value in life. Um, I don't know how you guys are, um, but I'm definitely one of those people that as soon as I meet someone, I, I definitely notice what kind of watch they're wearing. And for better or worse, I uh, automatically make some assumptions about them. You know, much as we do for, you know, people wearing the clothes that they wear or driving the cars that they drive. For example, somebody might see me wearing this Michigan shirt and assume that I'm big into Michigan football. And honestly, I know nothing about it. I, I don't follow it at all. I did go here, and I like Michigan, and I like the school. But So again, sometimes those assumptions we make may be wrong. Um, but you know, when I meet somebody for the first time and I look at their watch, it, to me it speaks a lot about who they are as a person. And it may not always represent them because obviously they may have received it as a gift or they may have purchased it at a time in their life where they didn't understand watches that well. But I think in general, it does speak a lot about the personality of the person that wears it. You know, if I see somebody wearing a Todd Coyier Quartz Chrono, I'm going to make a very different assumption about them than I would about somebody wearing a Jaguar La Culture Reverso, for example. Or if I see somebody wearing a Nomos, or even like a, a, a you know, Vostok, that says something very different to me than somebody who's going to be wearing, you know, a, a Boss, Hugo Boss, you know, Quartz watch. Um, so again, you can kind of, at the very least, I think it's kind of a way to get insight into if people are really into watches or not. Especially if I see somebody wearing a journal fashion watch, I'm just going to assume that they probably aren't really into the watch thing. But on the flip side, if I see somebody wearing a really rare and cool watch, I'm going to make the assumption that they're into that too, and that's a plan for us to kind of bond. And I'll typically bring it up in conversation, and I've started many a great friendship by just noticing somebody's watch and realizing that they're passionate about it as, as the same as I am. And the thing that I keep coming back to, and the reason this is so kind of relevant to me at this point, is I've been kind of sitting around thinking about how much my collection has changed over the years. And, you know, if you've been following me for a long time, first of all, thank you. Um, second of all, I don't know why you have, because some of my early videos were terrible quality. Um, honestly, I'm too embarrassed to watch a lot of my older movies or videos. And on that note, too, I'm, I'm going to try to pay more attention to the quality of my things. I some of these videos, I apologize, I kind of threw out last minute. Other ones, I try to actually make some effort to making them look good. And it's just, I need to do a better job of giving you guys consistent quality. So I'm working on that as well. Um, but part of the reason that I point out some of my older videos is, if you look at the, the videos I first started posting when I started this channel, they were very Swiss luxury watch oriented. And at that point, if you would have looked at my collection, it was all Swiss luxury watches. You know, I had my Breitling Colt, I had my Breitling Navitimer, I had my Omega Seamaster Chrono, my Omega Geneve, uh, I had, you know, the Rolex Sub, the Rolex Daytona, the Rolex Datejust. Oh my god, I've had so many I can't even keep track. Um, wow, there's, uh, I can't even remember half the watches I've had. I had another Omega Speedmaster, it's, I had a Jaguar La Coltra. Point being is, I, wow, I think, I, I think there was one year I actually went through like 20 watches too. I had a bunch of, uh, uh, what do you call it, Gerard Perigos. 
Yeah, I want to say like back in 2008, 2009, there was one year in there that I just went crazy and I went through like 30 Swiss watches. And, you know, at that point in my life, I was just totally sucked into the gravitas of Swiss watches and that was very much a passion of mine. And my collection at that point, I had the Rolex uh, day date on there too, the president. I mean, I, I was very much Swiss focused. I was all about the prestige brands. I was all about, you know, the cachet of the watch and just anything that was Swiss made. And I, you know, I was kind of going down the list of all the iconic watches that were Swiss made and I just had to have them all. And, you know, it's like anything in life, if you get into a collection, especially if you're extremely OCD like me, you've got to have everything that fits or makes sense in that collection. So I had a list of all the Rolexes that I want to own, the Omegas, the Breitlings, you name it. And I was on this mad mission to own every watch that met that criteria that I had set for myself. And then obviously as time evolved, I got a little, you know, my Swiss watch face kind of passed. I got a little upset with some of the servicing costs. I didn't really like the image that they were portraying to me. I think I became a little self-conscious that I thought people might misinterpret me as kind of being a little stuck up. That's an old other separate thing, nothing against Rolex or anything like that. Um, but there's just, I didn't like what they were saying about me. I didn't really like wearing them as much because I was worried about breaking them, what have you. And then I was all about, well, I'm going full Japanese, and that's exactly what I did. So I sold off all my, you know, my Swiss watches, and I started buying up Seikos and Orients and you name it, and then I went hardcore Japanese watches. And again, I started buying all the iconic watches, like even, you know, the one I'm wearing now. You guys have seen this on my channel a million times. This is my SRP 307J1. Mwah! I love this watch. Absolutely love this watch. Um, but... You know, it, I started going down. This was a watch I was adamant that I had to have. Um, I'm still thinking of picking up an SKX, just by the way. But there's uh, my SARB 035 is on its way from Japan still. I need. To, I wish they'd hurry up. It's, I really wanted to get you guys that Seiko video out a while ago, and I'm just like still waiting for my watch to show up. So sorry about that. Um, but then again, my my collection evolved, and then it went totally Japanese, and I was getting into more affordable watches. You know, and then I found out about Shinola, and then my former Michigan side was like, oh, I got to represent my hometown, Detroit. Well, I'm from the sheltered, rich suburbs of Detroit. I'm not really an official Detroiter, so I don't have the street cred. Um, but, you know, I went through that kind of phase, and it's like it, it continues to evolve. And now I'm at another point in my life where, you know, there's I'm realizing there's other watches out there that I've never experienced before as well. So I'm still very much into... Japanese watches and if you ask me right now what my favorite watch brand is Believe it or not. It's still Seiko. I just well maybe clear. It's JDM Seiko I am NOT a fan of the Seikos they sell in the US and that's a rant that I'll have on my Seiko video um, But JDM Seikos Japanese domestic market Seikos I'm their biggest fanboy any of you guys work for Seiko and you know how to hook me up with You know some watches to experiment with or just help you guys out in your brand I'm Totally up for that um, side point but, you know, again, it continues to evolve. And now I'm at a point, too, where it's like, what else have I, you know, been missing out on? Um, and some of it, too, is I felt like I've, I feel like there's been a point where I've just gotten too many watches in my collection as well. You know, I, I've gotten to a point where I have, like, well over 20 watches that I just have and I just don't even wear them. I mean, I, I basically gravitate to, you know, this watch and a couple other watches. So I've started selling off some of my other pieces just because I, I really feel like a watch is something that should be enjoyed. And if I'm not enjoying it, I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm kind of, again, I think I'm in a place in my life where I'm transitioning my collection a little bit again. And so some of the things that I'm looking at right now, um, you know, I've never looked at some of the lower end Swiss watch brands. So one of the things I have coming up this week is you guys have asked me about Hamilton watches before. To me, Hamilton is an old American brand that, you know, the Swatch Group bought out and has kind of made like a Me Too version of like a Tissot. But I haven't really had first-hand experience with one beyond holding one in a jewelry store and knowing a little bit about their technical history. So I just bought a Hamilton, and that's going to be coming up on the channel. Um, it's a Hamilton Trent Automatic. It has ETEA or ETA, if you're going to give me crap for that, uh, 2824 movement in it. So you guys will get to see me as a, I kind of get my first real experience with a Hamilton watch. You know, I might be looking at picking up a Tissot as well. Um, another Swiss watch, lower-end Swiss watch that I've always really, really wanted. Not because I'm really bowled away by the technical aspect of it, but the design really speaks to me. It is mundane. I'm still on the lookout for a mundane automatic. Uh, obviously, I could buy one whenever, but I want to buy one at the price that I think is reasonable. But the railway clock kind of look at those watches. I'm going to buy one sooner or later, so I don't know when, but it's coming. But again, 
my point to this video, and this is more of a, uh, I want your feedback kind of thing, because I, I, I'm kind of curious if we're all kind of like this. You know, I'm kind of finicky by nature, and, uh, you know, I have to build a collection with a certain theme, and then I get to that point, and then it's like, all right, now what? You know, life is a continuous journey, it's not a destination. So it's like once you've kind of mastered and you've collected a lot of your holy grail pieces, a lot of the watch collectors I've talked to kind of feel the same way, is that, all right, you've done that, but you want to keep growing, you want to keep experiencing new things. So, you know, do you guys keep on that theme and you keep looking for new things to incorporate into that theme? Or do you kind of expand your horizons and say, well, I've really focused on, you know, Swiss watches or Japanese watches, maybe I should look at, you know, I don't know, Chinese seagull watches, or I should look at, you know, a different price bracket, or maybe you want to look at, you know, like super high tier, Patek Philippe, Aude Mars Paget, you know, to me it's kind of this constant thing that as we grow and as we evolve, our collection really speaks volumes about who we are. Um, and kind of going back to that, you know, if you look at my younger videos, which are really terrible quality, so if you watch them, I apologize. Um, again, I was very much about having something that had prestige to it. And the whole, I bought into the whole gravitas of Swiss precision, Swiss engineering. And now I'm very much to the point in my life where I appreciate just pure mechanical things, things that are simple and just very well made. Um, you know, it's part of the reason that I love like my Lexus so much is the obsessive compulsive nature of the people that put that car together. Every time I get in that car, the quality of the stitching, the quality of the woodwork, just the way all the buttons feel, everything about that car, I know that there were several very obsessive compulsive engineers that went over every square inch of that car and were fanatical about getting that car to the utmost quality. And to this day, I haven't driven another car that I thought was as well put together as that Lexus. Um, and that stuff speaks to me, regardless of a price point. If that Lexus was a $5,000 car or a $5 million car, just experiencing that car, I just have the utmost appreciation for it. And that's part of the reason that I love the Seiko as well. Um, you know, having owned Submariners and a bunch of Swiss watches and getting a sense of their build quality and kind of how they held up. And then holding this watch, this the build quality on this watch, the simplicity of it, the quality of the loom, just everything about it, the very utilitarian nature of it, just everything about this watch just really speaks to me. It just feels like a very well-made piece and it's just I'm just very impressed with it you know much like when I get in my Lexus it's like when I hold this watch I'm just just holding it and having it on the wrist there's just a very good sense of just it just has a special feeling about it and you know cars are this way and I think watches this way too some watches just like some cars just fine art they just have soul to them and they speak to you and I think one of the ways that I really limited my collection in the early days is I was very much focused on brands and prestige. And I think when you do that, I think you kind of miss out on what really might speak to you. And I think my big surprise in watches, as in cars, as in many things in life, is you might be very surprised by the things that you actually really resonate with. Um, and I know this is very true for me. You know, 10 years ago, if I would have been telling myself that my favorite car that I've ever owned would be a Lexus, let alone as a car guy like me who's all about stick shift, you know, transmissions and racing and driving like a hooligan. Um, or and at the time, too, again, wearing a bunch of Rolexes, and then I'd be telling you that I'm in love with Seiko right now. I would have laughed hysterically at myself because I would have said that's absurd. But that's kind of the thing in life that I think as you get older, you realize is that the things that really speak to you in life can surprise you. And so, you know, part of that means that your collection, you know, should continually to evolve, and you should continue to challenge perceptions on what you think really is going to, you know, be a good choice for you. And so I'm going to try to get back out. I think I'm going to rebalance my collection a little bit and try some pieces I haven't tried before because, you know, who knows, maybe they will speak to me. And uh, I look forward to being wrong or changing my perceptions. So, uh, again, that's kind of a little quick rant on watch collecting. And I just kind of want to give it to you from my perspective. Um, for those of you that continue to watch my channel, you know, who knows what I'll be owning, you know, five months from now, a year from now, or five years from now. Um, this channel is going to be continuing to be random stuff that happens to collect, you know, catch my eye. And uh, I'm going to try to show you, you know, things across the industry from low price to high price and everything in between and every country of origin. Um, just because I build my knowledge and what speaks to me and what I think are the best out there and kind of give you guys a well-rounded perspective. So tell me what you think. How have you guys treated collecting your watches? Is it, you know, you very much driven on a certain brand? Is it a certain style? Are you into sports watches? Are you into dress watches? You know, what drives those decisions and how often do you change your collection? You know, I, I know for me, it's like I'm constantly getting attracted to new watches. And I, I know a lot of my watch buddies, too. It's like we'll be just be walking anywhere and all of a sudden there's a new watch we absolutely have to have. 
and as happens to be the case with me at least, it's like before you know it, you're buying another watch every couple months and you end up with too many watches to wear. Um, I know, first world problems. So there's kind of my little thing on watch collecting, um, just kind of an update on the channel in general, now that I've kind of covered this. Um, I'm going to be going to uh, Google this week and uh, they've invited me um, because I, my subscriber count has reached to a point where I guess I, I have, by the way, I'm up to 4,000 subscribers basically and I posted I think less than a year ago that I just reached 1,000 so oh my god thank you so much. I know I'm still a nobody on YouTube but I still really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I get to go to Google uh, later next week and I get to meet with some other content creators I think in like the 4,000 to 20,000 subscriber-ish area. And maybe it'll be a good opportunity me for to do some collaborations with some of them. I don't know if there's any other watch guys in my area, but it'd be cool to meet one. And just get ideas on how to improve my channel, because I'm under no illusion that I have a great quality channel here. You know, I watch other content creators like Hot Inky or even Urban Gentry, and I realize my videos are not at that same quality. And uh, there's plenty of opportunity for improvement. So I'm looking at some ways to improve that, and we'll see if I get any good tips coming out of that. And uh, I have a friend that's begging me to do a website. I don't know what I would do with a website, but if you have any feedback on that, feel free to leave it below. Um, but again, I have a Hamilton review I'm going to be coming out with next week. Probably going to do an unboxing on it, just since I've never unboxed a Hamilton before, so you guys can kind of see my initial reactions. And I'll do a full review on it. Um, I still have my Seiko SAR 035 on the way. Hurry up, from Japan. Um, and then once I get that, I'm going to do, obviously, a review and maybe an unboxing on that guy. And then I'm going to do my Seiko video that I owe you guys for so long. And the Seiko video is basically going to be me telling you why you need to buy one. And I absolutely think everybody should own a Seiko, a JDM Seiko. Um, but I promise you that's going to come out. And then uh, to my viewer Grant, thank you so much again for sending in the video of your Omega Speedmaster. Um, and uh, I will get it out to you, I promise. I, um, I need to get that together. But uh, so again, my, my viewer Grant sent in a picture or a video of his, his watch and I'm going to review on that watch as well. So I really appreciate that. Thank you for sending that in to me. And if you guys want to send me in pictures of your watches as well to review, I'm totally open to that as well. Um, just let me know in the comments below and we'll see if we can work something out. So thank you guys so much. Stay tuned for more. I look forward to making these better videos and uh, I just really, really appreciate all of your support on my channel and have a good one.